on my side. And now if something goes catastrophically wrong, you will you'll be able to just say, hey, Mark, because this has happened to me many times. It's like, my recording yeah. didn't work. Mark, do you have a recording <laughs> option? It's like, yeah, 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 I'll send it to you. Yeah, uh, I also have a, a separate program open, uh, open for, for recording. I'm recording it twice now just yeah. to, to make sure. Yeah. No, no worries at all. I have done this a few times. So yeah. what's, uh, how, how, how do you want to start? What do you want to do? Oh, you know what? Let's, let's just say for the record, you are in Austria. Yes. And this is for a what high school, college? What are we doing? Uh high school project, more or less. It's kind of uh, part of the um what I need to graduate, you know. So Got it. and how how did you find me out of out of all the people? How'd you how'd you find me? Well, I've seen your uh, documentary on Netflix. Oh, no, that would do it. Like uh behind behind the curve, I think it's called. Yep. We made that a few years ago and it went everywhere. So, hey, when you watched it over where you were, was it dubbed or was it in English? Uh, I personally watched it in English, but I think there's a dubbed version on Netflix also. Was that, I mean, that would have been dubbed in German? German, German. yes. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, I. that's so weird because when I was in Ireland, I had these three girls come up to me, three college age girls. It's like, oh, wow, great. Mm -hmm. They're young enough to be my daughters. And... Uh, and they thought I was French because the movie was dubbed in French. And it's like, wow, this thing actually <laughs> oh my did. God. Yeah, I go, this thing really did go everywhere. <laughs> so it's like, yes. oh, wow, that's, that's really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was 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 a very cool movie, yes. Well, cool. Glad, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. I, again, didn't, I was just the protagonist in it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't produce it or direct it or anything. Although mm -hmm. I did. Honestly, I probably could have gotten a producer credit given yeah. given the direction i i took yeah it was guys. it was mainly about you right yeah it's like look i set the, a lot of that stuff up so but it's like oh no we can't have you mm. be a producer and in the documentary it's like all right fine that's that's yeah. fine anyway <laughs> okay um so first of all um is it okay if i refer to the flat earth theory as a conspiracy conspiracy theory do, or do you, you call it whatever you can call it whatever you want it, it's it's I, you're not going no, to I, it... you were not going to offend me let's put it this way i've been doing this now for eight years okay so whatever you say totally fine you can you can you can call it i mean you could it open it's like you know you say i personally don't believe in flat earth i think it's nuts blah 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 and and all of you should be put in mental institutions you could say that and it wouldn't no me in the slightest Okay, but but how would how would you call it? How would you call it? What the flatter the theory? Yes. Um, you can call it that. Just call it flatter theory. I mean, okay. it's, it means what? And until we can absolutely lay something down that blows, you know, the, you know, the evidence where every where it resonates with absolutely everybody, then it's mm -hmm. not a fact. You know, science yes. is really particular in the in that regard. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, I can imagine that. You know, they they science is science is ex one of the most, if not the most stubborn group in in the world. I, you know, I've I've used the um the coelacanth fish many times, where it's a it was a prehistoric fish that was extinct for seventy million years, and then the British government caught one off the coast of Africa, uh, off the coast of um Mad uh, South Africa, and science is like no. No, it can't be. It's there's no way. And then they caught one of off of Madagascar, and then another one off of Mozambique. And pretty soon they realized it's like, oh, they, these things are swimming all over Africa. It took them though years, if not decades, to finally admit that it's like, oh well, okay, well maybe they're not extinct. It's like, it's like yeah. you guys are killing yeah. me. So yeah, yeah for I, us I... to come up with a proof. The the you know the long story is yeah it's still going to be considered a theory it doesn't matter how much stuff we show science uh the, it's got to be something that's absolutely bulletproof and right now there isn't so well, you yeah, know there you go yes yeah I mean they're all, even um amongst each other like uh, when somebody comes up with a new idea like it often it takes years till they yeah all yeah, can agree science, on it science yeah. is I'll give you that one yeah yeah science is extremely and again, the, then they don't apologize for it. The you, I, which is why I love cryptozoology. You know, it's not just the fish. You know, like the giant panda was an absolute myth. It might as well have been a unicorn. 
until you know, they finally dragged one into a cage. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, there it is. A funny looking bear that eats some bamboo and just does cute things on his back all day. Yeah. Or or the giant anaconda or even to this day, for example, um, the, the giant squid. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, which lives at extreme depths. And it's the it is the apex predator down there. We will never catch one. It's way too fast. They're way too strong. Uh, you know, you could send your best subs in there. And and our water isn't our best place to catch yeah. things. And uh, so we're never going to catch one. But 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 a sperm whale sometimes every once in a while eats one. You know, they they fight and, and it eats one. And uh, mm-hmm. that's the only reason we know they exist. It's like the remnants that are in the, the stomachs of uh, deep diving whales. So, but whatever. Anyway. Yeah. So. No, interesting. Interesting story. Yeah. I, I actually didn't know that. It's true. Oh, I, I'm I am chock full of aesthetic knowledge. You're going to figure that out pretty quick. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, can we start off? Yeah. Or... Do it. Yeah. Um. Well, could you tell us a bit about yourself, like the reader? Sure. Sure. I uh, much like the documentary. I I grew up a, a fairly a fairly normal kid. I grew up on an island. In the northwest corner of the United States, right next to Canada, I can see Canada right up the road from here. You can just go to the beach, and there's Canada. Um, I went to a small school, and uh, in the '80s, didn't really know what I was doing. Eight in the '80s, we, re- I mean, the the T-shirt reads, you know, no clue and no backup plan. We had no idea what we were doing because you know there was no internet, there was no anything. You were just kind of doing your own thing, and. Then uh, I, I, you know, I, I went to university and uh, got bored pretty quickly. My mind really doesn't like shutting down. And so I decided to make illegal fireworks for a living <laughs> on campus. Got nailed for that. Uh, got probation. And so then I turned my gears and I decided I was, you know, in my meantime, I was going to be a sous chef and manage a restaurant and during that, I had spare time. Uh, I was playing a lot of computer games, and I won this little pinball computer tournament and went out to Colorado. They hired me as a uh, professional video game player back like I was one of the first ones back a like, really? well, long time. You know, this was this wasn't the tournament video game players, you know, where there's audiences and money, you know, big money thrown at you. Yeah. This is a nine to five job. You're playing video games for a living. You know, you're sitting at a desk doing your stuff there's no fanfare and then i prepared i um i transitioned over to uh testing and installing proprietary software for 20 years uh for a time and attendance company time clock software basically that tracks people's time and did that for uh 20 years and then when i was between companies when the the boulder startup market boulder colorado started to, to tank I got, I was during that whole time, I'd never got married or had kids. And so I was there when the internet was brand new, you know, when you could, there wasn't, you knew all the pages that were on the internet, right? There wasn't that many out there and got into some rabbit holes and, and got into conspiracies late. I didn't even get into conspiracies really until 2001. Uh, I mean, you get the old ones, of course, and then delved into a lot of rabbit holes and knew about flat earth and ignored it and ignored it and ignored it because it's dumb. And then finally, it's like, oh, I'm not getting any younger. I might as well look at it just so I can, you know, check that box off and looked at it. And it took it turned into a nine month project, which eventually led to me making a series of videos and putting them online with all my contact information, kind of like how you got a hold of me and said, all right, tell me I can't prove the globe anymore. Tell me where I'm wrong. And instead of people calling me up from the academia world and shooting it down, people start calling me from all walks of life, you know, engineers and pilots, stuff you didn't hear about in the documentary. Tons of different people that they didn't weren't going to talk to because the, there was a narrative to that documentary. And that was that was basically it we you know we it, this thing just kept snowballing and snowballing to where we did a whole bunch of conferences and uh, i got to do so many cool things and opportunities all i had to do is say yes and here we are eight years later uh three books on amazon netflix documentaries some endorsements and 
I don't know how many interviews, hundreds, I don't know, somewhere under 500, but I'm not even, I'm not even interviewed the most. Now, uh, there was a guy that wasn't even in the documentary, David Weiss. He's been interviewed over a thousand times. Uh, he's got this wonderful video presentation. And, uh, and now that the pandemic stuff is the mandates have all been rolled back. Uh, I'm getting ready for our big, uh, flat earth conference in Las Vegas, which will be in October. So there you go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Very interesting. Oh. Uh, you said that pilots uh, reached out to you. Did uh, they? Yeah, uh, a whole bunch. Like, like for me, that's kind of like pilots um, would be kind of the last profession I think of who would like say the Earth is flat, right? Well, so, not the last profession. The last profession, the one. Yeah, we, scientists. The, the, yeah, well, no, not the scientists. I've even talked to scientists, but it's the aerospace people. It's it's the the space industry. They can't talk about it because that's their livelihood. It, for pilots, it's their livelihood too. But for pilots, it's just something they assumed and didn't really get into. It's like, look, the the most of the time, every pilot told me, it's like most of the time, all you care about is getting from point A to point B, right? As long as the plane takes off and lands and nobody dies. And everybody's fine. You know, it's fine. Let's just keep doing that again and again for years and years. And then you finally retire. But when they're out in the front of the airplane, they're, they're saying, oh, yeah, they could see way too farther than they should, but they don't question it. The navigation doesn't doesn't look right and they don't question it. And but the other thing is, even if they did, even if they could question it, who are you going to go to? Exactly. Let's say you're a navigator on one of the big planes and and you're you, you know, you've been doing it for 10, 15 years and, and you know there's something wrong with the navigation. You know that the, the, the math, the, the numbers aren't right. You, you know the plane is is not should not be looking at a particular thing off of the distance, but it is. Who are you going to go to? You, you're going to go to your airline. That's that's not going to work out. <laughs> we we've got living proof of that. Uh, you're going to go to the FAA, the you know Federal Aviation Administration. No, no. If if, if a pi pilots are really under a, a microscope, which is interesting because now they're not even paid that much. I mean, the planes basically fly themselves. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a pilot and you even say that you saw a UFO officially, right? You know, it's like, oh yeah, UFO trailed our airplane for 15, 20 minutes. If you even say that on the record, you're benched. You're 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 not going to be flying anytime soon. Because no one wants, you know, the pilots would be like, there's some irony here. You know, you don't want the, you want the pilots to be as stable as humanly possible, right? You don't want pilots to be in any way mentally compromised. Even though, like I said, the planes could basically fly themselves, but no one's going to get on a plane that flies itself. They're too nervous. Just it's like, what if the software goes wrong? And what, you know, you're not going to have a backup. So there you go. But yes, lots of pilots, Mil military and civilian have all have all said the same thing. They've uh, they said the the there's there's two two big things. One is when you're looking out the front of the plane. It, it it's a different thing from when you're looking at the side of the wind you know the side windows it looks absolutely tabletop flat you have a you know at least 180 degrees of visual spectrum um and the other thing they say is that the um the flight routes don't make sense on uh, when when you're especially if you're doing not just domestic flights i mean long flights they do not make sense they're they're taking routes that especially in the southern hemisphere they they take routes that are absolutely way out of proportion if it's a globe, but on a flat map, those same routes uh, are almost a straight line. Uh, and and I know we don't have too much time, but uh, I I'll, I'll mention just in passing. If you want to look up something, a, a great reference point, look up a video or a book called the uh, Sixteen Emergency Flights on a Flat Earth, uh, which or or I think it's called Sixteen Emergency Flights. Usually, that's the giveaway. Meaning, if something goes wrong on a plane, somebody has a heart attack or is going to have a baby or something like that. Even though when you're eight months pregnant, you're not supposed to be on a plane anyway. Um, the planes have to divert, you know, from their path to the closest airport, and almost every time they're diverting to airports that seem, if you're on a globe, that, that just don't even make sense. I'll give you a, a, a quick a quick example if you know geography which is uh, a plane was going from Philippines to Los Angeles, right? going over the Pacific Ocean, Ocean. And it was going to be, the route was going to carry them pretty close to, to Hawaii. They weren't even, I don't think they were even going to stop. I think it was going to be a direct shot. Lady, lady's going to have a baby. 
And so they, they want to lead, go to the, the closest airport. Well, they went due north, northeast, and went all the way to Anchorage, Alaska. And that doesn't even make sense. I mean, one, uh, there's way more hospitals, way better health care facilities in, in Hawaii. Way, and, and, and Hawaii's on your way. Unless you look at a flat map, and that same route then puts you closer to Alaska than it is Hawaii. But again, people people don't see it because they don't. They, they you've heard the saying, or maybe you're not old enough. Uh, you can't see the forest for the trees, which is you, you, it's right in front of you. But who's looking for it? So there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. Let's move on. Um, could you maybe introduce uh, the flat Earth theory and all? Oh, of the... the what what we're talking about? Yeah. Uh, exactly. the, the, yeah, the general theory is you are okay. So if you believe in science, you are living on a tiny little rock that's covered in a tiny little bit of water and even a tinier amount of air that's flying uh, at impossible speeds through an incredible universe. And you were just left over from the Big Bang. Your life means nothing. You're just residue from a from a cataclysm that was billions of years ago. And we go the other way. It's like, no, no, you're not. You're living in a building basically a, a glorified soundstage uh, that has walls and a floor and a ceiling. And you could be sitting on God's desk for all you know. And space is absolutely fake. Everything that you see in the sky is just a, an ornamental clock system that predates language. And our best and brightest didn't even figure it out until almost 1960 because we just didn't have the technology. You, until you have pressurized aircraft, you don't really know anything about this world. And when they figured it out, they decided to keep it a secret for as long as they could. And so from about 1960 until now, they, they did what they could. But eventually the technology was going to uh, seep into the civilian markets. And it did. And in about 2015, that's when you know I started throwing some stuff out there. I mean, people were looking at it beforehand, but I just kind of clarified it. And the the big thing the, the the big thing of why this changed was long distance photography, meaning HD technology changed everything. I know you're not old enough to remember what happened before HD, but HD when it was built into cameras meant you could zoom in on objects in the distance and they were very very clear, you know, because they were they were enhanced. And so boats that would normally be over the horizon, you can't see them with the naked eye. Uh, you can now zoom in on them with cameras, and they're there. And the curvature should be in effect. After, you know, there's only so far you should be able to, to look in the distance before that boat is on the other side of the hill or lighthouse or landmass or whatever it is. And it's not the case anymore. The only limit to what you can see in the distance now is uh, the thickness of the atmosphere itself. You know, because what, what you're breathing in right now is only 99.9% .9 transparent. You know, it's got a thickness to it. It's not nothing. If it was a vacuum, for example... Just on a side note, you know, because people say, well, you know, why can't you see Europe from New York and why can't you see Japan from California and why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Right. Because it's the highest place on Earth. That's because, well, because you're looking through basically a thin version of water. And so that's it. But if it was a vacuum, oh, yeah, which is what one of the problems we had in when we designed video games is that there's nothing right. when you're when you're looking through a video game atmosphere, there is nothing there. And so you can see forever. <laughs> you can see it's just the limit to what we draw. Uh, but uh, that's another story for another time. So there you go. Interesting. Thank you. And well, how did you get into Flat Earth? We all already. Oh, well, I mean, again, I got into it because I looked at every other conspiracy. And <laughs> yes. I, was just, I was just bored. I, it's like there's nothing else to look at. And so I had an opinion on every conspiracy. <laughs> Most of them are American, which is weird. And um, and then looked at this thing and and uh, decided that it was worth the time to make the content and put it out again. I wasn't was never going to establish myself as a YouTube channel. I mean, I'm, I'm Gen X. So I don't care. Yeah, I mean, you're Gen C. So, I mean, for you guys, the social media is very very important. For Gen X, it's like it's an after effect. It's like, yeah, it's fine. Um. But when I put it out there, uh, it just got, it was resonating with a whole bunch of people. And so the people saying, you know, tell me more, tell me more. And I told people what I could. And, but then they just kind of ran with it. 
and this huge, you know, the, the other, it connected the dots and connected a whole bunch of other people. And then next thing you know, we're, we're having conferences about it. So, mm -hmm. And why were you so interested in the first place? in conspiracy theories in general uh because if you're if you're old enough again no offense to you you're you're gen z yeah, no but, offense taken well you are you you grow up you're born into a media machine that tells you that spins a narrative to you uh again the line that i i love from from carrie fisher who was you know pre played princess leia in the star wars movies years ago where she they were asking her about reality television and she you know when it was new and she laughed and she goes what are you talking about if it's on tv it's not real meaning everything is scripted so for for me when i got into conspiracies it was stuff okay let, let's put it this way there are conspiracies if if it's if something happens in the news and it's it's considered a scandal right if it if it's you know somewhat shady unless somebody dies and then it's considered a tragedy anything that's not media sanctioned is a conspiracy but we all know there's conspiracies in all sorts you know in business and politics and sports and and science and journalism and and you name it there's there's all sorts of conspiracies uh so it is it's the truths that the media doesn't want to talk about and it really varies from from network to network and so the, the, for me i don't even call them conspiracies i just call them objective truths which is there's stuff out there that for whatever reason the the media just doesn't want to tell you uh, i'll use a quote from one of our presidents uh, franklin delano roosevelt who was a president back in world war ii in the united states fdr they called him and it was a great quote he, he goes he goes he goes, only give the public as much truth as they can handle. And I, I firmly believe in that, which is the the public, there's there's some truths out there that are too big for, for the general public. You know, you, or, or to quote Mark Twain, if you know who Mark Twain is, uh, American author from back in the day, he, go, he said, he goes, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Which is, yeah. which means, and every producer knows this, which is you spin the narrative the way you want. You, you minimize the negatives, you maximize the positives. And so that's what conspiracies are. Conspiracies are things that mainstream media doesn't want to talk about with the public because it paints certain groups like governments and the authority and, uh, you know, in, 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 in light, it does, doesn't really help them at all. It doesn't help their narrative. It, it's some most of the time it's negative uh and i'm a big believer i'm one of those weird conspiracy guys i believe in the greater good i don't know what you believe in but for you know the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one mm -hmm. and when it and a lot of the conspiracies are out there deal with the greater good and w which is you know i mean most of the time they're painted in the light you know the governments do things because they're evil now you know all the government people wear black hats and twirl handlebar mustaches and it's like, well, yes, yeah, sometimes they do, or sometimes they just make those decisions for the empire. Uh, you know, I don't want to pick on America too much because you know I'm from America, but the American Empire, come on, we we, we went to war with to to carve out what we have in the United States, the United States itself. We went to war with everyone, <laughs> everyone to do it, and then we painted ourselves as the good guys after the fact, right? Where the, we're just one example, where you know we went to war with the British twice uh we we took went to war with mexico went to war with spain and those were just the countries to get the you know what we you know our our core country and then we branched out and 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 went to war with all sorts of other people but in every one of them we never said that we were the bad guys we always said we were the good guys so mm -hmm. there you go conspiracy uh, because you go ahead yeah okay um because you uh, said uh, about the governments. Do you think that the government is in on uh, the flat Earth? Or oh, of course they are. Of course they are. But it's one of. But it's one. It's one of the few conspiracies where they didn't start it. Meaning, when it comes to every other conspiracy, and I'm not going to rattle them off for you. You probably know some of them. The government was behind it, right? The government started it, and they did it for a reason. 
uh, you know, even little things. I'll, I'll give you Pearl Harbor, if you know what that is. You know, the, the yes. okay. Pearl, Pearl Harbor is a great example. And, and usually it's considered too big of a conspiracy, which is did the United States allow Japan or, you know, bait Japan into attacking us? So that we could we could motivate our people to join World War II because the American people had no intention of joining World War II. None. It's like that's Europe. We don't care. It's like we aren't. We're not going to go over there. But then Pearl Harbor, which is Hawaii of all the places, it's not even directly mainland America, gets bombed, and Japan was allied with Germany. It's like oh, and I mean, literally a million men signed up for the draft the very next week. Very next week. It's like a million guys just signed up for the draft. It's like, yeah, send me over there. It's like, wow. I mean, revenge is, just, but, but that's just, again, that's, that's an, a, a local conspiracy. That's an American conspiracy with flat earth, but the Americans didn't invent flat earth. The, the flat earth is way bigger than that. However, when you, they found out if the Americans and the Soviets found out that this world was a building, you know, a Hollywood soundstage, basically. Uh, back in 1960, do you tell the people? No, no, you can't, can't do it. Uh, I mean, look at look at 13 years earlier when Roswell. You probably heard of that thing over the years. Um, Roswell, New Mexico, supposedly, a, a, you know, a spaceship landed, you know, in in the de- you know the desert in the farmland, and uh, you know the government you know covered it up. And, but before they covered it up, people were freaking out big time. So in 1960, do you tell the people that, oh, yeah, by the way, we were wrong about a lot of stuff and, and uh, we're actually living in a building? No, you can't tell them. You, you, you've got to hold on to that for as long as long as you can. So, yeah, the government sealed off. They, they created the Antarctic Treaty, which, you know, you can get a PDF copy of that any, anywhere you want. It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties that says Antarctica is off limits for all corporations till the end of time. Just stunning. And then uh, in the same year that was ratified, they said, oh, yeah, the Van Allen radiation belts are, are up there. Nobody should ever really do a private space program. And that kept this private space programs away for decades. And, uh, yeah, it was just time and money. And, and now they're kind of letting it seep out there because now they can monitor social media in real time. And you can you with the metrics, you can see what the, how the public reacts instantly. You don't even have to wait a week or two. You can find out within minutes how the public could react to any given topic. So there you go. Mm-hmm. And, but you said, uh, there's no private space companies, but what about, no, space no, no, space? no, no. I mean, it's you, pretty no, you new. Did, you did back. <laughs> yeah. Remember for decades and decades, there were no private space companies, mm-hmm. meaning, meaning blue horizon and, or blue origin, blue, Horizon, oh, whatever the Amazon space company and Virgin Galactic, and SpaceX weren't a thing for a long, long, long time. And until what, over until the 2010s? And no one ever, and you, what the reason why you don't encourage private space companies is because you don't want uh, unregulated space, meaning you militarize space in the beginning. NASA is a complete Department of Defense U.S. military organization. I mean, yeah, they wear white, they don't carry guns, and they smile for the camera. But they were built literally on the still burning embers of the uh, the Nazi war machine. I mean, come on, the early scientists they were all they were all from Germany. And then, That's true. yeah, uh, and then you you let that build, and then in nineteen you know in the nineteen sixties, you it's like, oh, we're going to go to the moon back six times. Da, 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 da round trips and then you shut the whole thing down in 1972 and that's it the space race is over no other country even tries to put people on the moon and even america doesn't talk and yet and all they do is every american president since i don't know reagan going all the way back to reagan they all say the same thing oh we're committed to going back to the moon and every four years oh we're committed to going back and and that goes on for for years and years and years to where now it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, now Artemis just supposedly going back. Yeah, that's that's going really well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a nightmare. And by the way, did you watch any of the Artemis, you know, Artemis one footage? Did you ever watch any of that? Uh, no, I did not. Ugh, watch it if you get a chance. There's two things that really stuck out. We knew it was going to happen because Artemis was never supposed to launch. We were supposed to be in a war by now. 
um Artemis one what you know it was supposedly 50 miles from the moon right with with multiple HD cameras I've never seen such grainy footage ever I couldn't even tell what I was looking at and yet it's like you're 50 miles away in a vacuum it should be absolutely crystal clear footage but the other thing that got me was all those cameras hundreds of hours of footage no stars ever were shown and that goes along with the narrative of the american space program the apollo program which was you know they didn't show any stars in any of the shots of the moon and they're saying well it was an exposure setting if you know anything about cameras the old film types that's like okay fine in 1969 if you want to say it was an exposure setting fine i'll let you get away with that but it's 2023 everything's digital now uh, exposure settings aren't even a thing i mean it's just a uh it's a, there's so many different filters you can put on cameras and they've got the top of the line stuff there should be stars everywhere in every shot and there's none and again the general public doesn't doesn't even notice it so it's like all right fine anyway yeah what else um well uh zoom is telling me that our meeting is over in 10 minutes um I don't know what that's. Oh, about. we can, we can, you can, you can do a second one if you want, if you need more time. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, of course. I have, I have time. Uh, do you have time? Yeah, I got time. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's move on. Um. What are kind of the main? Maybe give us uh like three main arguments that made okay, you I'll, believe. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the five bullet points. Let me know when we got like one minute left. Okay. Oh yeah, here there it is. Remaining time, eight minutes. I can see that up there. Okay, I can do this in eight minutes, and then we can you can set up another meeting mm -hmm. if you want. The um okay, so the five bullet points. There was a Georgetown physicist that wanted to uh, they a German uh, ZF one that's a German television ne network apparently. They wanted to do a debate between me and him, but they didn't want to do a live debate because uh, if you have a PhD, your social skills are just terrible. You know, they're, they're very, very dry. You know, they're in a very, very small wheelhouse. So they said, what you're going to do, come up with five science points that we can relay to him. So my five science points are this. First off is long distance photography. Uh, that's what gets most people into flat earth. I mean, you go down to the beach with cameras, and I never told people to do this, and you start shooting things off in the distance, a boat, a lighthouse, a landmass, whatever it is, the sun. Let's shoot things off in the distance, usually on a calm day. If you can do it, you can see way further than you should be able to. Meaning the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile squared or eight inches per mile per mile. We don't see that. We don't. And and I know it gets the math gets a little fuzzier after 500 miles, but it doesn't matter. We're shooting less than 200 miles most of the time. Uh, second one would be uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space, which is. Everything in a vacuum expands, you know, the law of thermodynamics, um, pressure cannot exist to next to non-pressure being a vacuum without a barrier, right? That is a law. It's not a guideline. It is not a rule. It is a law, meaning it absolutely happens every single time. Uh, if you had a vacuum chamber above you right now and you pop the valve on it, the air would instantly rush up there. It would, it's not like the movies. It would probably kill you uh, or suck your head right into the hole. And uh, in a fraction of a second, right? Because a vacuum is, is not to be messed with. The pressure equalization is is absolutely instantaneous. And yet when you go outside, our atmosphere is still here. We're still breathing, but it's sitting right next to a massive vacuum. How? How is that even possible? We say it's because there's a barrier there because you're in a building. And they say, well, it's because of gravity. I go, yeah, gravity is not a barrier. It doesn't work that way. Uh, third one, which would be the eclipse shadow, which I, I like, which is uh, if you if you've ever been near an eclipse, the eclipse shadow is uh, the moon is supposedly two thousand miles wide, but the eclipse shadow is not two thousand miles wide; it is seventy miles wide. That which means a total blackout. You know that seventy miles wide is like well, how is that even remotely possible? Um, well, it makes sense to us because we say the sun is about seventy miles wide, uh, maybe maybe a little bit less. We're not sure. But it's definitely not 2,000 miles wide. It makes more sense in our model than it does in the um, uh, the the solar system model. Uh, fourth one is the moon temperature, which I didn't even know was a thing. Which is, you know, you if you if it's, I, I'm not going to convert it to Celsius for you. You're just going to have to go with Fahrenheit for this one. So if it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, right in the um, in the sun, it's 70 degrees in the shade. We all know this, right? It's always cooler in the shade unless you're in the moonlight. Then it's the opposite. So it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the, the moonlight. It's up 60 degrees Fahrenheit or even more. We've seen 13 degree swings in the moon shade. Wow, how is that even? How? 
how does that happen? Because remember, the moon supposedly only gets its light from the sun. So it's reflecting radiated heat from the sun. It should never go negative. But it's it's generating a cool laser light, a technology that we've had for years and years. And you can you go on Amazon, you can buy cool laser light products. So why is the moon generating a cold laser light? It's because it's its own, it's self-illuminated. It has nothing to do with uh, the reflection of the sun. It's it's completely independent from the sun. The sun and the moon are, are the same size. They're just rotating over us like, uh, like a light bulb and a night light. Uh, and last but not least, the, the fifth one uh, was the Van Allen radiation belt question, which is the Van Allen belts, these huge belts of radiation announced by United States scientist Van Allen, of all things, from NASA, says in nineteen in the 1950s, he says, oh, yeah, he, in fact, he announced it in 1959, said, oh, yeah, Van Allen radiation belts are, are super dangerous. No one should ever, ever go up there. All right. And yet in 1960, John F. Kennedy, our president, he says, oh, yeah, we're going to do a space program. We're going to go through these. And they had to go back to Van L. It's like, oh, I thought you said we, we shouldn't go through these. He's going, we're going to go really, really fast. And it's like, what are you talking about? Your best speed is 18,000 miles an hour. I'm not going to convert it kilometers for you. Uh, I think it's 20, that's 24,000 kilometers per hour. And so, and you're saying it's 50, 60,000 miles thick. You're talking about hours each way. In fact, you're going to spend more time because you're going to have to slow down coming back through it and you know you 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 sent mission six round trip missions to the moon and back through these radiation belts with no shielding right the only things that stop radiation are um lead gold which is twice as dense as lead and uh, a whole bunch of water which they use in power plants and yet nobody died nobody got and, th and they didn't use any of that they used aluminum and plastic that doesn't stop anything uh, and nobody died. Nobody got cancer. Um, and there's still, I think, four of the original Apollo astronauts still walking around. Everybody died of natural causes. Year, decade, you know, in that, you know, in their 80s. So what happened? All right, are they deadly or not? And if you say, well, they're not deadly, then you can go to the NASA.gov website. There's a wonderful video out there. Or you go to YouTube. There's a, a video called Orion Trial by Fire. That says that, oh, yeah, uh, our Orion program, we're, we're not going to use manned capsules until we can figure out the radiation problem. And it's like, what are you talking about? You solved the, the, the Van Allen radiation problem back in the 60s. It's, like, it's not like you can't, un, you can't do that again. And so what is it? Yes or no? And um, anyway, those five questions I gave, you know, we gave to that scientist or the physicist down in uh, Georgetown. And that was it he, he just folded he's like nope we're not doing this and and i i get it you know he it wasn't in his wheelhouse he could only answer maybe one or two the rest he wasn't comfortable answering and that's how we keep growing is because science is too tunnel visioned and they they can't see beyond their immediate research so mm -hmm. uh with a minute left you want to kill this one and then send me a link to another one yep. yes Let's all right i will stop recording and we'll um well you mentioned um lunar eclipses how would that even work in your model L lunar eclipses or solar eclipses oh, so like with like the with moon both. in front of the sun or the sun in front of the moon let's go with both okay uh okay the, the short version is everything in the sky is just a projection so if you've ever, I know you're young, so you've probably never been to a planetarium because they would be super boring for you. Uh, but back in the day when we didn't have internet or anything to do uh, and you wanted to see space, you could go to a big domed structure that was just, you know, you lay on your back and they turn the lights off and let your eyes get adjusted. And then they project the, the nighttime sky onto the ceiling. And, it, you know, as the years went by, it got more and more realistic. But honestly, you know, they're not going to spend hundred million dollars on a planetarium nowadays but if they did you could you could do anything just about anything you wanted to including you know with the tech we have now you could almost make a realistic sun now doing a sun in a, the old school planetariums doesn't make any, any sense because it's all about the nighttime sky so but I'll, I'll use the moon for you just for an example when uh when you're in a planetarium and you're looking at the moon uh, they can do a full moon. They can do crescent moon or waxing and waning crescents or all, all the stuff in between. So how do they do it? Well, it's you know, back in the day, they just did it physically with, with models. But now, you know, they can do it with software. 
it's the exact same principle when it comes to the sun. Uh, I had a guy call me up after the 2017 eclipse and he, and he took a lot of video and still shots and put, pulled them into Photoshop and, and opened them up. He goes, look, he goes, nothing is eclipsing the sun. I didn't understand what he was saying when, when he meant, and I go, what do you mean? Nothing is eclipsing the sun. He goes, the sun is self eclipsing. He goes, it's, it's self shading. And I go, Oh, of course. Of course, it makes it makes total sense because that's what we do with the moon all the time. But since nobody sees, you know, the it, the the solar eclipse is so rare, almost nobody ever sees it because the blackout zone is so small. Why wouldn't you do that? There, this place, this place is a glorified again. It's not just a soundstage; it's an illusion. It is, it's pretend uh, for a reason. You know, the if you can fake the solar system. Right. If you can if you can fake space, then you don't need space. If ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population believes in the illusion, then you don't make anything more than that. So, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, if you have super engineering capabilities, why wouldn't you make a full blown solar system? Or why, you know, are you saying that God is lazy? You know, if you believe in God, it's like, no, no, I'm saying that God or whoever it is would be very, very efficient. Um, even Carl Sagan, one of our early uh, astronomer guys back back in the day that was on television, even he, even he had to scratch his head a few times because, you know, the universe, he goes, there's a lot of it doesn't make sense because it's so big and so empty. It seems so inefficient. And in our model, it's very efficient. So there you go. Long answer to a short question. Short question is uh, the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse is just part of the, the display system that's up there. Mm -hmm. um how has the choice of believing in flat earth uh changed your so your uh social life like relationships well, it's a completely different set of friends that's for sure uh as a matter of fact i mean i couldn't date anyone for example no granted there's there's a lot more women in flat earth that than than in other conspiracies because flat earth is a message of hope which i i didn't expect um, when you go to conferences, there's way more women than you would expect. Um, and they're not there for me. Uh, they're they're there because flat earth isn't sinister. It's not dark. Uh, so there's it, it is, it, you know, if if it is if you are living in a building, then this place isn't an accident, which means this universe isn't an accident, which means that you're here for a reason. That doesn't matter if you go to church or not on Sundays, but at the very least, there does there's more of a semblance of purpose than than before um i most of my friends are are flat earthers i mean it's no it's no different than if you're if you're trying to date someone i know you'll you'll get that way if you, once you get older you know date somebody who's uh, a completely different religion that's a great example which is you know if you're islamic and they're catholic <laughs> it's probably not going to work if if you're if you're both diehards in your in your religion it's kind of like that so the the people in our flat earth you know we don't generally we we know who's in and who's not and uh we we tend to talk to each other well yeah we'll recruit and and figure out who it is but if you got someone on the other side that that doesn't i mean sometimes you'll run into live and let live situations where you know i've got family members and, and some friends that are like yeah i know what you're into i don't agree and and but i still want to hang out with them because they have other qualities you know that i that i that i like hanging out with but yeah for the most part we tend to now you know when we do forums and and chat rooms and stuff it's it's generally our people mm -hmm. do you believe that uh the flat earth uh, theory is part of a bigger conspiracy or uh like... no because it's it's one of the biggest conspiracies there is on its own uh mm -hmm. the only thing that flat earth might be tied to that might be bigger would be the existence you know uh, uh two things one would be the existence of other civil uh, civilizations besides our own which you know most people believe in that anyway that there's other people you know other groups out there it's not just us um but the other would be of course the biggest one is why we're why we're here but is that a conspiracy or is that just the meaning of life yeah uh, so do i think flatter is tied to that yeah you bet i do 
do do I think it's a, a conspiracy necessarily in that the the powers that be the authority want to keep that a secret for as long as possible? Yeah, probably. Because if if you do figure out what this world objectively is, then the motivation for continuing to act naturally here goes out the window. So um, if you, it'd be kind of like a wildlife preserve versus a zoo, right? In a zoo, you know, the animals walk around, but they're constantly surrounded by people and their cage is pretty small and they know, they know where they are. I mean, granted, they're not sentient, but they know where they are. They, they're aware of their surroundings. You put those same animals in a wildlife preserve that's maybe, I don't know, 100 acres. They'll act absolutely naturally. Like, like there's nothing, nothing wrong going on, but, but you, you know, you put that same wildlife reserve on humans, humans all, all, if they see the fence, that's the big thing I was, I talked about in clues a long time ago, which was if, if human beings know they're in a enclosed system, if they know they're in a, uh, an artificial system, they will act differently immediately and forever. And so the way around that is you tell them there is no wall, there is no cage, you know, it's a, there, there is no, you're, you're not confined in the slightest. And they're like, oh, okay, do, 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 and off they go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did uh, Flat Earth change your everyday life or do you just live the way you always lived? No, it changed it forever. Uh, I, and I did not know. I, I That was uh, something a producer told me years ago. Uh, one of the early producers who was way ahead of this. Uh, she, we were, she was pitching this as a television, reality television show back in 2015, beginning of 2016. And she said that the, the way this is expanding, the way this is going, you're going to have to stay pretty mobile because uh for, you know, flexible what you want to do because you're going to be pulled in a lot of different directions and it's like all right i don't know what that means necessarily and she goes no i mean it's you the, this thing you're going to be one of the representatives for this group so you know be ready you're gonna you're gonna have to do conferences you're gonna have to do public speaking you're gonna have to do meetups you're gonna have to you have to explain yourself a lot <laughs> And so, yeah, it, it it did change. It changed everything about me uh, mm -hmm. to where now, I mean, this is this is what I do. I'll probably do this until, you know, until either I die or the world does. Uh, what do you think about the current stage of the Flat Earth, flat earth uh, community and where do you see it in the future? Well, in 20, before the pandemic, we could do no wrong. We were, we were going at a speed where we couldn't even keep up with, with what was happening. I mean, we did in 2019, we did conferences in seven countries and those are just the English speaking ones. And then, uh, you know, you know, I, I've lost count of the amount of meetups and, and, uh, all the other fun stuff we were doing. And then the pandemic happened and, you know, as you know, for three, for three years, I mean, I've been traveling internationally since 2020. And then once the mandates got pulled back, we were like, oh, okay, well, let's just start up again. And then we did. So, you know, I, like, again, the, the big conference we're doing in Vegas, and I've got a bunch of meetups that are that I'm already publishing on my channel. And we've got meetups that are happening every week now. And and uh, again, it it's sp the reason why it spreads the way it does is because it's an easier way to understand the universe far easier than the, the solar system model meaning and people are look people go with easy i mean you're living proof of that i mean be, before there was texting there was no texting people called each other on the phone and but texting is emotionally easier so everybody texts i don't because i'm gen x um but with the solar system model, you need what um, trigonometry and, and calculus and uh, quantum mechanics and string theory and all that other crap. And with the flat Earth model, you need basically none of it. <laughs> I mean, it's a building. It might as well, you know, it's it's engineering at that at that stage, and uh, so and and some physics, but it's local physics. It's not cosmic physics. And so because it's easier to understand 
it resonates with people and people will always lean towards the easier option. People could never get their hands around the, uh, or hands around, heads around the, uh, all the numbers of the universe. I mean, come on, even the speed of light is broken down to the speed per second. Because when you say it's 720 million miles an hour, that means nothing. That that number means nothing to, to people. It's like, it's incomprehensible to the human mind. And with ours, it's easy. It's really easy. It's like, oh yeah, here's all the continents. You're, you're living in a, in a snow globe. You're living in a building with a giant saltwater lake. Uh, and then there's some islands in the middle of this lake we call continents. And there's a sun and the moon above you, possibly three dimensional, possibly two dimensional, and you know some other systems. And it was it was built to keep you. Well, that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so sorry, I ramble. Okay, um, yeah, let's move on to another uh, topic. Do you think? Uh, and I think another question, but. Uh, I, I think I know the the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think the media represents your ideas in a fair way? No. <laughs> no, no, mainstream media does not. Social media, sure. Social media, you know, depending on which group you're talking about, uh, can be very objective if if they're not. if But once social media, a platform gets too big, uh, the government steps in and or the authority and, and starts censoring stuff, you know, like over the United States, for example, YouTube, um, there were three things you could not talk about, could not talk about. Uh, one is medical misinformation. You could not contradict the, the CDC or the WHO in any way, shape or form. Uh, you could not talk about false flags, if you know what that is. Uh, you no. know, meaning if, there, if uh, false flag is uh, if, if a tragedy happens. Uh, you can't make a video saying it didn't happen that way. So if, so if people died, like from a, a mass shooting or a plane crash or a boat crash or something like that, you can't make a video and say, I don't think it happened this way because of this. I have a conspiracy theory around this. You can't make conspiracy theories about things when people die. No, nah, not anymore. And then um, uh, the last thing which which they finally rolled back was you could not criticize again and over in the United States you couldn't criticize the uh, the 2020 election presidential election you could not criticize mm -hmm. it which is like wow talk about a free speech punch in the face so uh so yeah mainstream media has their narrative and uh you know I'll put this out there to people to understand you know people say well there's no such thing as fake news it's like of course there is like, oh, it, let me uh, try to resolve these two statements. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Well, that can't be both true because they both absolutely tell you, mm -hmm. you know, the both audience is like, oh, no, both sides lie. It's like, OK, so there is fake news, depending on whose team you're rooting for. Everybody has a narrative. Every media organization has a parent company, which has a parent company, which has a parent company. And they have their narratives. You know, they they have to. They will spin. It is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Uh, there, you know, an American movie years ago, Citizen Kane, great example of this. Where and this is back when there was just newspapers before there was television. Where if you were very wealthy, I mean, it's an old, it's it's an easy answer, which is if a newspaper is writing bad things about you and you're really wealthy, what do you do? Well, you just buy the newspaper, <laughs> and you can make them write whatever you want. And that, and you, then you tell your friends that, and then all the rich people buy up all the newspapers and all the radio stations and all the television stations. And then it's like, oh, hey, while we're at it, maybe we can push a certain narrative. So no, sorry, short answer. Uh, but to that point, sorry, let me throw in one more thing, which is, is mainstream media completely shutting down flat earth? No, it is not censoring flat earth but it is restricting it in some ways. I mean, for the first three years on YouTube, we were promoted with just reckless abandon. They loved us because we were a binge topic and YouTube is the, the biggest television network in the world. And they wanted a binge topic and we saturated their markets and they let us and they, they wanted us to for whatever reason. And then after three years, they decided to pull back. And it's like, okay, we're gonna, we don't have to recommend these guys so much anymore. Three years is probably enough. And mm -hmm. so now we're not censored on YouTube. They're not going to shut down a channel for Flat Earth, but they certainly won't recommend us anymore. 
Okay. And um, why would the media media not censor flat Earth theory if the government government doesn't want it to like? <clears throat> well, that's that's a big. You? That's a good question, and I'm still trying to work that one out. Which was, I think, for whatever reason, there. I I don't know. I don't know the the secret reason behind it. But they, for the longest time, they, they didn't even have to talk about it. You know, because nobody they they promoted. They stopped it before social media even was a thing. You know, we put globes in the classrooms of first graders, and and that's it's the only thing we debunk to children. We tell people in media, it's like, we used to think the world was flat, but now we think it's a globe. And here's the globe. It's going to sit in your classroom forever. <laughs> it's never leaving. It's always going to be there. And I mean, that's great conditioning. Um, but but you're right. The, now, I mean, they are, they're definitely not shutting this down. So why why let us do it? I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe part of it could be it's like, well, if you do shut down Flat Earth, it's it'll seem so outrageous. And we might make up so make so much noise that you actually might draw more attention to it by, you know, if you shut down all the flat earth channels, people are like, why are you banning flat earth? You know, banning up because then you're kind of you're almost legitimizing the, the conspiracy. You know, when you shut down yeah. other conspiracies, it draws attention to it. Maybe by shutting down flat earth, that's the case. Or maybe you are trying to eventually introduce use flat earth to open minds up for a, a bigger narrative that you want to introduce like i don't know another species or an alien civilization or in something interdimensional i don't know i don't know but mm -hmm. we we're definitely being used for something we're doing the legwork for them uh i don't even think there's any artificial flat earthers in our community i never have thought that uh because they can be spotted we're we're pretty sus a pretty suspicious group and so it, you know is are there are there people inside our community that are steering flat earth in a certain direction? I've never seen it. So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, and you said the media does not re represent your ideas in a fair way. What do you think about the movie behind the curve we talked about earlier? Did it oh yeah. Well, that one, that was, uh, it, that movie did more to help us than it did to hurt us, but it seemed like it was almost on accident. Meaning, because uh, I was with these guys for seven months, and they, it was initially supposed to be a human interest piece. And then when a 12-year-old kid, no offense to you, a 12-year-old kid was asking me a question on stage, that's when everything turned. Because they realized that there was younger people getting involved in this. and But the movie was already done, and they didn't have the money to reshoot it. So they just twisted it in editing. Uh, the power of editing and and went against us but it, in going against us they brought in a, a bigger audience because making fun of flat earth brought people it put people in the seats and they they let people watch it because it's like you know even the the title behind the curve right you know because the flat earthers are slightly retarded <laughs> so so they're behind the curve and that and made people safe to to enter to watch the movie. And I sat in with studio audiences, and most of the people that that watch it, you know, if you don't know any context going in, they think it's a fake movie. Meaning they 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 think the characters, they think we're all actors for at least the first 20, 25 minutes. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, these aren't actors, these are real people. And then it just so that helped us. I mean, it it uh so. The, the our community hated the movie, uh, but the the rest of the world found it very very interesting, and so it drew in a lot more uh, people into into our our community just because every any producer will will tell you this they'll say it doesn't matter whether you love a topic or you hate a topic as long as you're talking about it making a flat earth propaganda piece would have that wouldn't have generated that much interest making a complete hit piece i mean just torturing us throughout the entire thing uh would have also would have been negative but this was kind of a fair snapshot of what was happening some years ago so it it worked for me would i have changed much not really i mean i may have changed the ending with jaren's thing uh but the ending was was crucial because you had to make sure at the end you you had to hit that note where the producers are like, okay, we're not into flat earth. We got to make sure that the flat earth don't flat earthers don't end the movie with credibility. And so they didn't. Okay. Um, 
do you believe in any other theories that could be classified as a conspiracy conspiracy theory yeah all of them <laughs> all of them <laughs> all of them uh i'll give you the ones that are safe for you to talk about um mm -hmm. pearl harbor we already mentioned you know which is you know if you if, if pearl harbor doesn't happen we're all speaking german no offense to you <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's true though. I mean, German Germany was going to take the whole world. Everybody knew it. They were they were beating everybody up, uh, and they were they were they were just finishing everybody off. And if America hadn't joined, it would have been over. Um, the moon missions, uh, always a good uh, conspiracy. Which is, uh, I'll give you three. Um, the the moon missions, which are um, the the did the Americans go to the moon? That was that that's been a conspiracy actually since the nineteen seventies when they when they closed it down because all the nerds back then were, were analyzing the still shots and the footage and it was like this doesn't make sense none of this stuff makes sense the technology doesn't make sense the the optics on the moon don't, don't make sense nothing nothing the radio transmissions everything doesn't doesn't make sense uh jfk always a big one uh you know did did uh and and the big one there is was it was it a lone gunman that uh that shot jfk i highly recommend the oliver oliver stone movie which i still think is his greatest work which was jfk uh and in that case you know i'm I'm one of the few people that say oh yeah jfk was doomed he had no chance he was going he had no allies in the government he might as well have been caesar i mean he had no allies and did did was there motivation for other government you know other government people to remove him from office <laughs> you bet there was he was never, and he was, a, sorry, one more thing. Uh, I don't know, you probably don't know much about JFK, but he was a long-term problem. The The biggest problem with him was, is that he was going to get reelected in 64, and that he was going to go, you know, another term, 64 to 68, and then his brother, Bobby, who was the attorney general, and everybody loved him, he was going to, he was going to run, he was going to go from 68 to 72, and 72 to 76. That's 16 years of Kennedy's. They're like, oh, no, no, we got to stop this now. You know, there you know, people in power, their patience is limited. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, other conspiracies, you know, I don't, I, I can't officially talk about nine nine eleven online, and you probably shouldn't either. Um, there's other smaller ones out there, but I, I I'll give you, you know what, I'll, I'll talk about a conspiracy which nobody talks about. You ready? Mm -hmm. Right, the Panama yes. Canal. The Panama Canal. You've heard of it? Yes. Okay, Panama Canal. Right? It, it, I'll give you. I'll give you a perfect example of a conspiracy nobody wants to talk about, and and it's not sinister. It's just how things get done. Oh yeah, by the way, another side conspiracy. Look this up if you get a chance. The Titanic versus the Olympic. That the Titanic mm -hmm. had sunk wasn't the Titanic at all. It was actually the Olympic, and it was a big insurance fraud um, thing uh, for the the British shipping company. And I absolutely agree with it. Which is like, oh yeah, I would have tried it too because the the British government wouldn't pay an insurance claim uh, when a, one of their uh, military ships hit the uh, the Olympic and they, they wouldn't pay for it. And so it's like, we got to get our money back out of this. So they sunk the Olympic. They just wrote the name Titanic on the side. Uh, they tried to, but it was supposed to be a rescue ship. Anyway, doesn't really matter. That's a good one. Look into that one if you get a chance. Panama Canal. Here's a here's a great example of a conspiracy you're never going to hear about. I'm, I have the exclusive on this one. Because nobody thinks about it. That is, uh, so like, say, uh, when you build any major construction project, there's always people that die on the job site, right? It's just how it works, especially if you're building something really big and heavy, like a dam. Like the, the Hoover Dam, I believe, uh, there was like 70 guys that died during the construction project, which seems like a lot. But back in the 30s and 40s and whatever, it wasn't that many. You know, people fall off of buildings and, and trucks tip over and things happen, right? 70 people died. The Panama Canal, which was really just a glorified concrete ditch, right? A series of, of canals, right? That they dug through the freaking jungle. Uh, do you know how many people died making that thing? Mm -hmm. No. Better part of 6,000. 6,000. And this wasn't military people. This was civilians. We've had military conflicts, which didn't lose that many guys. So how'd you lose 6,000 men? During the the building of this thing, when none of them fell off of anything, right? You're just with you're just digging this, right? And the reason is because they died of malaria or yellow fever. And you're gonna nod your head. It's like, well, that's just what happens. You're in the jungle, right? And it's like, well, what if I told you they knew 
it's one thing if you lose 6,000 guys, right? You're losing so many a month. It's just getting ridiculous. It's another thing if you're, if you know, you're going to lose them ahead of time, meaning, you know, you're going to, they're all going to die. And it's like, well, they didn't know. It's like, oh, sure. Because the Panama, Panama Canal wasn't our idea in the first place. You know who, who started the Panama Canal? The French. The French actually started back in the late 1800s because they knew the, the military significance of it. It's like, oh, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's do this thing, right? It's the it's the most expensive toll road in the world and is the greatest military choke point in the world simultaneously. They, You know how many the, the French lost? The French lost over 20,000 men. They lost so many people. There were protests over in Paris and France. All these mothers, it's like, look, we got sons that are dying in freaking droves. Stop the freaking project. So they put down their shovels and they left. And then the Americans are like, say, this thing's partially done. We should get in on this, right? They were fully prepared to, to here's here's where the conspiracy comes in, right? The, even though they, the Americans had to invent mosquito netting and repellent and all this other stuff, they were fully prepared to lose 10,000 men. Here's where Here's the conspiracy part. When they're hi hiring these engineers and these guys to go down there, are you telling them? Are the Americans telling them? It's okay. Yeah, by the way, just so you know, yeah, you're going to get paid pretty well, but there's a one in eight chance you're going to die, right? Because that that's what the odds were. One in eight. Do you tell them? Why? Why would you tell them? You don't. And there's how a conspiracy is born. You hide something for the greater good, which was should the Panama, Panama Canal been finished? Yes. And we did finish it and we ran it for decades and decades and we made a crap load of money off of it and we turned it into, you know, it is a massive military choke point. It's, it's strategically one of the most important places in the world. But you didn't tell a whole lot of people they were going to die in the process. That's how, that's what a conspiracy is. You did it, you did it for your own reasons, for your own personal reasons. You let the common man suffer for the greater good without telling them. Is there a right or wrong behind it? Eh, not for me to decide. It's too big of a question. But there's there's a there's a wonderful conspiracy for you. Mm -hmm. uh, because you mentioned Kennedy and yeah. the conspiracy around him. Um, isn't Kennedy's nephew or something uh, running for office? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you that think family, that? by the way, is cursed. Most of the family has died over the years. Yeah, I mean it was a big Catholic family. There were you know lots of kids uh, and. Uh, anyone that even thought about running for president, uh, you, you know, Bobby and, and um, John, of course, died. But Ted didn't have to die because he was discredited because, you know, he he let that girl drown. He crashed his car off a bridge and the and a girl who was in the passenger seat died, <laughs> drowned, and he he got out. And so he became a senator for life. He died a senator, but he could never run for president. So, uh, but yeah, this guy's running. He's never going to be able to do anything. Trump's it's everybody knows it's going to be Trump and Biden going into the, um, going into the thing next year. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I, I don't know what, how it's going to play out. I, I think they're probably going to let Trump lose again, just to create more division in the, in the country. Cause I can't see the benefit of having Trump win. If you're trying to create division in the United States, which is part of the Great Reset, which is, um, you know, the Great Reset does not start until America is diminished. Uh, the United States is way too much of a loose cannon for the uh, the, the main authority to, to keep that going. So what else you got in your last nine minutes? Anything? Um, no, not really. I think. No, uh, that's we it. Covered... OK. Yeah, <laughs> I think we covered everything. OK. Uh, wonderful. Uh, if there's anything else you need from me, any resources, any links, or uh, any any particular videos or, or topics you want, you need specific examples on, just shoot me an email, and I will let you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Help me out. All right. Let me. Oh, did I not? Oh crap! Did I not hit the record button? No worries. I I got it recorded. On the second part, can you send me the? Uh... I could have sworn I hit it. Yeah, send me the second part if you get a chance. I'd love to have it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, man.
Hello, Maggie.